Greetings one and all, this is your course manager, Eric, here at UT OnRamps, coming at you today to talk a little bit about Google Data Studio. Data Studio is an online way that we can take a data set and analyze it. If you have access to a computer that can install Tableau, I recommend using that for the course. However, if you're on a Chromebook, then Google Data Studio is an excellent alternative to help you finish the big data project. Head on over to datastudio.google.com. That's the URL that will bring you there. And you're gonna need a Google account. So you can either use your school account or your personal account. This is what the landing page of Data Studio looks like. And up at the top, you'll notice that you have access to your files, you have different reports, you have different data sources, you have different Explorer. If you're familiar at all with Google's ecosystem, this should look fairly familiar. What we want to do, however, is use that Create button over to the left. When we click that, we're gonna get a couple options. We have the option to make a report, to upload or link a data source, or to use Google Data Explorer. The one that we are always going to start with when we are beginning this project is data source. We need to link in a data source to the platform so that we can begin to do some of these visualizations. So let's see how that's done. The very first time you jump in here, you're gonna get this screen, which asks you to sign up for emails. Go ahead and just put no thanks for all of these and then save it. And with all that out of the way, now we can see there's multiple ways that we can input data. And the two that we are really gonna focus on are file upload and Google Sheets. So if you're working completely on a Chromebook and you're not able to download files at all, then you're gonna to wanna to use Google Sheets and you can connect a data source to your Google Sheets account and then run it right into here. When we click on file upload, we're going to be asked to authorize Google Studio being able to upload. Uh, go ahead and just click that blue authorize button. Likewise, if we're using Google Sheets, you also need to authorize Google to be able to talk to your Google Sheets account. So go ahead and do that. Here you can see that I already have a data set ready to go. It is called Pokemon, and we are going to be clicking here to be able to load it into Google Data Explorer. If you want access to this, you can find this inside of the data set folder that I've set up for you inside of the college course. That way, if you want to follow along as we go through some of these tutorials, you are more than welcome to do that. As the data set gets loaded up, we're going to see a screen that looks like this. This is all the fields that are in our data. A field can be thought of as a column in a spreadsheet or a data set. Of course, we're gonna have a field called name, which names the Pokemon. And you can see here we have one that's called abilities. That will be the abilities that belong to that Pokemon. And then we have a bunch of others against blank, against blank. These are all magic types that the Pokemon either is weak against or strong against. Going through here, we have a ton of fields. You can see here we have 42 of them to be precise. I'm gonna click the explore button in the upper right here. That's gonna bring me to a screen where I can begin to create some visualizations. By default, Google Google Data Studio is going to just list out the first field. In this case, for the Pokemon data set, that's the abilities, and we can see those here. Let's walk around this screen and take a look at what everything does. Starting in the upper right, you have the chart slash table view, and in here you can select different types of ways to visualize your data. We'll be going over a few in later videos. Using this arrow up here, I can minimize that, and now we can see that I have different types of data and fields available down here. We have our data source listed out, that's the Pokemon data. Dimensions are normally, if we're looking at it, graph dimensions, are usually going to be the x-axis. These are the named features of the data. So in this case, that would be the abilities. Metrics are going to be more number-based. In this case, it's how many of them are there. So when we put abilities and dimension, we put record count in metric, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be counting how many times those abilities appear throughout the data set and giving us a tabulated number, a sum of how many times those abilities appear. And you can see here on the screen that the ability levitate appears the most. It appears on 29 Pokemon. All the fields that are available in my data set are over here as well. I can drag and drop them into the dimension or the metric fields or I can put them into the filters section. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'm going to get rid of all this data here and then I'm going to recreate it using a different way of visualizing it. But I'm still going to go and use abilities and how many times they appear or their frequency in different Pokemon cards. Here in the upper left you can see that there is a button that says add a chart. This is another way of creating a visualization. So when I click this you can see that same window that was available on the right hand
hand side under charts is available here as well. In this case, I'm gonna select tree map. A tree map is a great way to do an automated summarization. It takes dimensions, in this case, the name of Pokemon's abilities, and it's going to present it in a box and it's gonna base the size of that box based on the frequency in which those abilities appear on the card. So we'll be able to very quickly see which are the most popular abilities and which are the least popular abilities using this visualization. We could always change the metric if we wanted to. If we wanted to know, for instance, which abilities are strongest against fire, we would just drag the against fire into the metric instead of record count. And that way we could change up the visualization. In this case, we can just see the frequency in those abilities and Levitate is obviously the most popular by far. And how can we change the look of this? Well, that's gonna be under this style tab over here. So if we wanna change the color, if we wanna change the font, the font size, that's all over in that style tab. That's gonna be a very important tab in order to make our visualizations really appealing for our audience. Each different chart or visualization has their own unique style tab. So always pop in there, see what you can modify, see what you can alter in order to get the style of visualization that you want. Now that I have my data looking how I want, I can come up here and I'm going to utilize the filter function. I'm gonna drag the abilities dimension over here into the filter. And then when I click on it, it's gonna bring up a box that says, what do you want to display on the screen below? By default, everything is checked. However, if I wanna turn everything off, I can just use this checkbox next to abilities and then I can manually turn on different dimensions that I want to represent. For instance, if I wanted to create a visualization with just the top six abilities, I can do that by clicking their unique checkboxes. Here you can see that the data now below the visualization has been modified to just show me those six. And that's where our filter comes in and that's what makes them immensely powerful in shaping the visualization to tell the story that you want it to tell. Down below, there's a series of tabs and I can rename the tab that I am using. It defaults to tab one, but I can rename this as automated summarization. I can also duplicate these tabs down below. So if I wanted to create several different types of automated summarization based on different filters, then I can do that. So use the duplicate feature in order to not have to reinvent the wheel every single time you want to try something new. So Google Data Studio is a super powerful tool. And I hope this gives you a good intro to some of the ways that we can import data and that we can manipulate data. Stay tuned for future workshops where we'll be going over some of the more specific analysis techniques in addition to automated summarization that are asked for on this big data project. So as always, this is your course manager, Eric Dillman, signing out. Best of luck.